Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. This week on Hot and Cold, we're down in the basement because we're going to do electrical wiring, and it is now time for the requisite hot and cold electric panel joke. There's no power in here, so I can go like this. back. <laughs> hey, we're back. The cameraman thought that was pretty funny. We're going to do some wiring this week. We're down in the basement. It has come to that point in time where I can't take it anymore. The old wiring completely driving me crazy. It's time to start rewiring the house. And what I have done is I have situated a new panel. You'll notice I have pressure treated two by fours going down the floor because they're sitting on this wet floor. And then I have got a piece of half inch CDX plywood with about a foot on either side of it to run wire. And smack dab in the middle is the electrical panel we looked at last week, ready to go. So what we're going to do is all the new wiring that we can hook up, the small stuff, outlets, things that don't have real heavy loads, we're going to wire into here until we get to the point where we can't do anything more and then we'll get an electrician in here who will finish up the installation for us. Now, I preface everything I say for this show with the fact if you don't understand or you don't feel comfortable or you're a klutz, you don't do wiring. Well, wait a minute, I'm a klutz. No, uh, you really have to be very confident and understand what you're doing inside this panel because it is extremely dangerous. It will kill you quicker than you know what happened. This panel is not hooked up to anything. I'm running wires into it, but there's no power coming into it. So it is extremely safe at this point. And I like working this way because there's nothing here. Now, normally the power comes in and goes into the main breaker. We talked about this last week. There's two stout leads about the size of my pinky go in here. You can turn off this main breaker and it kills all the power to these bus bars which would have power in them. These, these are copper. They, they don't look like copper but they are. Um, but up here, if you touch up here on a regular circuit breaker box, even though this main breaker is off, you'll get electrocuted. So I have the luxury right now of working with a completely dead box, no power here. I can fool around. I can touch everything. I don't have to be worrying about that. I can just focus on what the project is at hand, and that is just getting the new wire and run in up to a certain point. At a certain point, we're going to jump some power over to here, but we'll still set it up, and you'll see that in a future show as to how we do this so we can render it fairly safe. So it's nice and safe right now, and I like it that way because, as I say, I don't have to think twice. And what we're doing is we're just bringing in some new stuff. Now this circuit here comes down. You notice the nice right angle. I should have a staple here. I do not, but I'm going to put one there. And I got my staples. I got to find my hammer, and we got a couple. Oh, here's the hammer here, and I got a box of staples right here. And wire staples are not expensive. You don't scrimp on wire staples. I'm running out. I'm going to have to buy a couple more boxes or a big container of them. We want to make sure that the wire is secure and everything is put in, in um, its proper place. Normally when you're doing the run, we're going to run a little bit wire so you get to see a little bit more about this. Every two or three feet I have a staple to hold the wire in place. And you can see up here, you know, I've got coming off this board, I've got one, two, three right here. Then I go up here, anywhere where I want it to be secure, so it isn't going to move very far if it gets yanked on. It goes all the way across, and you see staple here, staple here, 
staple here and all the way out to the load. This particular circuit that I have wired up is the new outlets that I put in the kitchen. There's three outlets that go to this particular breaker. There's another breaker I put in that goes to the new panel. We're going to move it over here eventually. Goes to the um, kitchen counter outlets. That has a GFI on that circuit. Then we have a separate breaker which is also over in the kitchen for the refrigerator. And then we have a big breaker for the stove. That will be the entire kitchen. So we have four circuit breakers feeding the kitchen. We have a lot of appliances in the kitchen, so we want to have all those circuit breakers. So we'll have four circuit breakers in here. Then underneath where I'm standing is the living room, and we'll probably have one or two breakers feeding the living room. Likewise, we'll have the bedrooms. We'll have a couple of breakers for up there. We've got to have a 220 breaker for the dryer. It's a washer-dryer combination. And uh, we'll have some out, uh, breakers for outside um, lights and that sort of thing and overhead lights and we'll pretty quickly fill up the entire panel. So what I'm trying to do is get as much of this done ahead of time as possible in non-mission critical areas. In the basement we're in the process of doing some wiring which we're going to look at in just a moment. So what I've done is when we come into the box here, we'll have to get in real tight for this, we come in we have the three wires again. Here's the black lead, goes directly to the circuit breaker, that's the hot lead. It comes in through a Romex connector. Um, let me get a big one down from here so I can show you exactly what a Romex connector is. It's just a pass-through device. They make them out of plastic or metal, and it, it screws into a hole. There's knockouts in the side here, they're called, and it's just a hole. We, we push that out, and we put the Romex connector in. It screws in. It's got a big nut here. It passes through, and we just tighten that down. The wire passes through here, and then we tighten that wire down and it holds it securely here. And we've got a slightly smaller one here for the, for the small Romex. This is for bigger wire. And we always have that when we're passing through the box because the box, when we put the knot, we take out this, uh, this slug, this knockout, we wind up with a, a rough, a sharp metal edge. So we want to make sure that we have a smooth edge where the wire is passing through because we don't want it to chafe. So we come through, we've got the hot wire, we've got the neutral goes to one bus bar. And then on the other side, we have a, another bus bar, which is for the ground. And you see how I've tried to make all the wiring nice and neat and rectilinear, nice right angle turns. We want it to be easy to trace wires. If somebody comes into this box after me, we want to keep it nice and neat and clean. The other thing we've done is the Romex has insulation on it. We're going to take some apart in a minute here. And we, we cut that back to where, just beyond where it comes through. We don't need that inside the box, and we'll see a little bit more about that in just a moment. Anyway, that's what we'll do, and then we'll just go right along here, and we'll put a circuit in, and we'll work off either side, and we snap in the circuit breakers like I showed you last week. They snap onto the bus bar like that, and we'll just fill up the entire box. And before we know it, we'll have the whole house wired. But there are some things that take some time in doing wiring. This is actually the pretty simple part, getting things hooked back to the panel. Getting wire run, especially in an old house, in any house, but an old house in particular, takes a little bit more time. And we're going to do a little bit of that so we can see what it's all about. But I think we've got to take a break. We'll take the break. We'll be right back. We're going to run some wire. All right, we're back. And we got this wire. We've got to do something with it. I actually have run most of the wire, and I'm just fooling around. Um, when you do wire, it comes in a coil. And as you unroll it, unless you have an unroller, it invariably gets a little bit tangled up. So what I do is I run back as far as I can and then I wind up tw untwisting the wire because it has to lay flat. So what we do is, and, and we always have to go around other wires and pipes, which is always a hassle, but you, you have to kind of take a little bit of time to lay this out properly. And also I find when I have the hammer and I'm doing this, putting the staple in, I can guarantee you there's going to be a time where I'm going to hit my thumb trying to get that staple started. So what we do is uh, we want to get around over to uh, uh, the uh, floor joist adjacent to the, to the uh, panel. So we're going to put one more staple here. And then we're going to loop our way underneath. And this just takes time. I mean, you know, this is what you pay an electrician for. 
the time that he or she spends in the basement running wire. I mean, it, it just is, uh, it's an exercise. And you can't fast track it. You have to do it nice and easy. And we're going to get a staple in here. You can see now what I'm, I'm up against. I just, and we also always try, and when we put the staple in, two things we're going for. One, we want to have a little bit of wiggle there. See that wire moves a little bit. We want to restrain it. And we want to make sure, because if, where this is a wire staple, we can drive that down through the insulation. Because the insulation on the wire is not very thick. It's, it's just a PVC sheath. It's got a little bit of paper inside of it. And as one who has done it, you can drive this right through that and through the wire insulation and actually make a short. Takes some effort, but I've done it. So we want to pay a little bit of attention to the detail. We run the wire nice and flat, and we just work our way over. And I think what we need to do is set over here now. Okay, and we're going to put a, a couple more here. We want to make sure we have enough wire for what we're trying to accomplish, and we're getting a little bit close. If you, if you ever watch an electrician work, they always use more wire than you might think is appropriate. But when you get back to this panel, if you don't have enough wire, life as we know it is not good. So what we're going to do is we've got a heat pipe right here we're going over. So we're going to pull in a little bit closer on this side for this bottom one because we need to come in, see we rough this and we need to come in down here, turn a right angle, come in. We need to get to the breaker. We need to get to this bus bar. We have to get one around to that bus bar as well. So I think, no, well, maybe I can go a little further out. Yeah, it's not going to bug us too much. I'm going to rough it, and if I come up a little short, I can always pull it out and redo it. But I think we'll be okay if we go right there. I'll staple that down in a minute. Now, let's uh, put this here. here. And we'll get a Romex connector. We'll, let's pop the knockout. We're going to put a breaker uh, right here. So let me get my needle nose pliers. Now, there's three tools that I use a lot, uh, four tools, I guess. You've got to have a hammer for wiring staples or hammering staples. Needle nose pliers is invaluable for this operation. I also have a wire stripper, wire cutter that I use, and of course, a good uh, Phillips head, pan head screwdriver. So what we're going to do is we're going to push that knockout I was telling you about. And if you look here from the inside, see we have this slug that we just push in. And one end stays attached. And now that's ready for us to put a Romex connector in there. So here's the Romex connector. This is the way it's going to connect up when we run the wire through. And we'll clamp that down. This is a 3 8 Romex connector, which is what we use for most regular wiring. This is 12 gauge wires called 12-2. We put the Romex connector here and we tighten the, we put a nut on the inside and we just tighten it up. And now we have a safe pass through for the wire, which we're going to feed through. Let's just make sure we have the wire laying flat here as we, because the wire where it's coming out of a coil usually gets twisty when you're doing this yourself. If you're not a professional, I just need to open up that connector a little bit. It's a little tight. All right. And again, I cannot emphasize enough. There's no power on in here. So this is all easy to do. If the power was on, it'd be a whole other ball game. All right. And I think we're going to have enough wire to do everything we want to do. So I'm going to take a nail. Uh, a, a staple, I mean, and look for my hammer, which is right here. And we can put a staple here. Put that there for now. We might as well tighten this right down. Now, one thing I haven't been doing yet, and I will be before we're done, 
is we're going to label the circuit breakers. And the panel comes with labels here. I think we looked at this last week. It says what it, you know, has a lot of generic names of what everything is. And we'll have that on the actual breaker. And there's also a numbered thing on the cover for that. We're also, I'm going to write, you can write with a ballpoint pen on the wire as it goes into the panel. Either a ballpoint pen or a Sharpie. To, uh, so I know out here what wire it is as well. And uh, that's a good thing. We want to make sure we know where everything goes. And, and this is the time to do it while we're putting it in. I'm going to swing over to this side. I'm going to take a razor knife and I'm going to cut down the middle of the wire carefully. Cutting that outer sheath. Now I'm cutting in the middle because if I peel back this cover, we've got the paper cover. And in the middle is where the the ground wire is, which has no insulation on it. If we cut off to the side, we're apt to cut either the hot or the neutral wire that has insulation. So I've carefully gone right down the middle, and what I'm going to do is pull that insulation off, and when I come back, we're going to have bare wire, naked wire, on hot and cold, and we're going to hook it up, and it won't be long. Hey, we're back. So I've got the, the bare naked wires here now, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make it with this one. Did I cut? See, now this is what I was talking about. We're just coming in a little bit shy here on this wire. I don't like that. So I think we're going we're gonna to cheat this out, and we're going to undo these, these staples and move the wire over a little bit. This is why and I had pre-cut this wire ahead of time, so, and I got into mischief here. So I'm just going to pull the staples out and slide the whole thing over a bit. And by coming down like this, I buy myself the couple inches I need to make sure we're okay. Okay, so I've, I've set this over just a couple inches, and that couple inches has bought me enough wire so I can do a neat job and bend it up. I'm going to snake it around, and again, this luxury of not worrying about shorting out anything and getting an electrocution uh, on TV, live on TV is a good thing. And we're going to run, <laughs> we're not going to run that one. And, and when you're doing a TV show, the, the white lead goes over here, the neutral does. So let's get that over where it's supposed to be. Okay. Nice square. And now we're going to strip this wire back. And we've got a 12 gauge wire, so we'll go into a 12 gauge stripper. We strip that back, okay? And we're just going to straighten that out a little bit because it gets bent a little bit with all the machinations here. And we're going to loosen up this fastener. We're going to run this wire behind here so it's out of the way. We're going to snake that in there. Just have it come through a dike. We're going to tighten that down. And now we want these wires to be Nice and square, smart looking. I think that's pretty smart looking. That's what I want. Okay, now we've got the ground lead. The ground leads go on this side. Same deal. We're turning it up this way, making some nice right angle turns here. We're going to clip that wire right here. We're going to loosen the next bus bar connection, which I already did, and there's copper wire, we can bend it a little bit, get it in the hole, tighten it up because we have a pretty good idea where it's supposed to be. And then we can push this back. Well, I'll tell you what, that's, we can actually pull that through and we're going to cut it. Let's get nice and... We don't need excess wire in here. And again, we have this luxury of not worrying about electrocuting Tom. Okay because there's no power in this panel. We just cut that off. All right. One more wire to go. That's the hot lead. That's going to our circuit breaker. Now let's take a look at something on the circuit breaker here. See what it says there? It says strip. Doesn't mean you're supposed to take your clothes off. That is the length of wire that we strip, insulation that we strip back, which is about a half inch. 
because that's going to go into here. Whoop, I hit the camera. That's good TV right there. Because in here, see if I loosen this up, that's where the wire goes. Inside there, see that little grabber? And if I tighten that up again, if I can get the screwdriver in there, the jaws close up. And that's what's going to clamp the wire. So we're going to put this back in place. like so, and we're going to come out with a little bit of a right angle there, and we're going to cut the wire. It's the path of no return, so we're going to cut it a little bit long even. I got the strippers here, and I said a half inch, so we're going to go to a half inch here. All right, and what I like to do is actually take the breaker out insert the wire where I can see it because it's hard to see when it's inside there and tighten it like this I can feel that and then I can go like that and I can adjust this accordingly nice straight line and that breaker is all hooked up now you've probably been wondering what does that breaker go to? that's for the basement lights and we've been in the process of doing basement lights, so I'll show you over here quickly what we got going on. Got to get my tools. And over here is what we're doing. We're hooking up this particular circuit that we just hooked up is going to here for these, for porcelain light bases. And all we're doing is I've got, I don't know, five or six of these spread around the basement presently. We're going to do more later on, but for now, five or six where I'm working is important to me hooked up to a light switch that interrupts this circuit, the light switch being upstairs, the head of the stairs, and this will be the last one. We're going to strip these wires back. I'm going to put the porcelain base down there because if I drop it, it's going to break. These two wire sets, being black, white, and, and ground, are going to get stripped back. The wires are going to get hooked in parallel, the black to black, the white to white, and on the, on the base here, we have two different color screws. One is kind of a silver color and one is kind of a goldish color. The goldish color is your hot, the silver color is your neutral. And then that will mount up here on this box, we'll put a light bulb in it, and when we get power over to that panel, we will then have the luxury of unhooking, wow that's, oh, that's scary, did you see that? Look at that. Look at that bulb. It's shaking. That's not good. Uh, we have the luxury of taking this out and a lot of this wiring that is, a, it is tied in with some other circuits in the house. So if we shut off a breaker for one thing, all the basement lights go out. Now we're going to have a dedicated circuit. So that's a good thing. We wanna, we're going to do another round of wiring down in the basement for outlets that will be live all the time. And we'll have the outlets in a similar location up here spread around the basement. And the idea is we don't want to use extension, any more extension cords than we need to. And we want to have safe lights, and we will. And we want to have fixtures that work. That one actually works. That's one of the few that actually does something. Most of them do not. So, so we're going to start cleaning up the basement stuff. And the reason I'm doing the basement first is because all my wiring, in case you haven't noticed, has to start down here before it gets upstairs. And I want to be able to see what I'm doing. And there's a lot of this basement wiring that is just a royal mess. So that's going to get, be able to be pulled out as we get um, some of that reconfigured. And as we do, we know that the basement lights will have only lights and no other circuits. Anyway, this is what you get into with old houses. And you have to understand, you know, we pay electricians for their experience and the safety factor and the fact that they will not, when they're done, our house will not burn down. So once again, if you have any doubts about any of this, call an electrician. This is just to give you an idea of what goes on inside that panel. And if you, know, if you have a little bit of a clue, I have found that electricians are, many electricians are happy to work with me on projects and let me do simple stuff. Maybe it's just running wire and uh, pretty mundane stuff, but it takes a lot of time. And if the electrician lets you rough in wire in the basement, you know, you may save some money. Let them do the panel, let them do all the rest of the hookup. My level of comfort is I'll put the panel in, I'll run the wire to it, but from that panel out to the 
to the circuit, to, to the meter, excuse me, and to the drop that goes to the pole, electrician's going to do that. That's big wire, it's a lot of current, and they know how to do it. I, I do, but I don't want to mess with it. Anyway, that's what it's all about. Electri you know, you do what you're comfortable with, and you hire professionals, and electricity is nothing to mess around with if you don't know what you're doing. We gotta go because we are out of time. I'm sorry, this took so long. It seems like it took a long time to me just to hook up a couple of wires, but it's important stuff and it gives you at least a basic idea of what we're dealing with. See you next week. If you have any questions, give us a call on the radio. See you soon. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.